Hey everyone, Anarch here, and this is another episode of Anarch Abridged. And the topic of today's episode is going to be an analysis or perhaps a uh, deconstruction or a debunk of angles on authority. If that sounds interesting to you, you should stick around because I'm going to be going through this very small but influential essay one paragraph at a time and explaining why Engels is mistaken and why he misunderstands the political terms that he is analyzing. Uh, if you're here, however, uh, go down and like the video, leave a comment below if you've got any ideas uh, or thoughts about what I've said here. And uh, if this is the third or fourth time you've been served up one of my videos by the algorithm, go down and subscribe to the channel. You know, this is the uh, sort of content that I produce on Anarch. Uh, lastly, if you want to really support the channel, go over to my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Anarch, A-N-A-R-K. <clears throat> but that's it. That's the, that's the spiel. So uh, as I was saying there just a moment ago, I think uh, a lot of people have really overestimated how much content is in this short essay by Engels. Um, on Authority, I believe, was uh, uh, released in 1872, and it is a very short essay. I think a lot of authoritarians have never even read it. They just kind of accepted that it must contain some very powerful debunking of anti-authoritarianism. However, it really doesn't contain any such thing. It is an extremely brief um, uh, analysis by Engels, which really almost completely misses the point of the discussions which he is trying to intervene in. So what I'm actually going to do in this video is we are going to go through on authority paragraph by paragraph, and I'm going to respond to each of these paragraphs in turn and uh, discuss what Engels is trying to say and then responding to each of them. I think what you'll find is that uh, there's uh, about four or five paragraphs that pretty well say the same thing, so we might be able to skip few uh, through a few of them. However, uh, I'm going to be trying to go through every single paragraph in the essay as to, uh, uh, you know, avoid the criticism that I've somehow skipped over some very important argument by Engels. I think uh, what you'll find is that there really just aren't any important arguments in the essay. So uh, let's get started at the very beginning. Uh, this is Engels giving his preface and uh, sort of explaining to us the context of the reason why he's written this. He says, a number of socialists have latterly launched a regular crusade against what they call the principle of authority. It suffices to tell them that this or that act is authoritarian for it to be condemned. This summary mode of procedure is being abused to such an extent that it has become necessary to look into the matter somewhat more closely. <clears throat> so what we can see here is that Engels definitely is responding to people who are anti-authoritarian. Now, I don't know enough to know the sorts of people he would have been talking to here. Um, we can probably assume that they would have been some form of uh, anarchists. But uh, it should be said that anarchism had not really fully come to fruition at this point in political history. So he's probably referring to the fact that there is a very broad coalition of people who are socialists and their socialism is anti-authoritarian, what we might call libertarian socialism today. So he's kind of setting us up, basically saying, you know, I've been having these conversations that are frustrating me, you know, in a, in a way it almost seems like he's telling us this is a shit post, but Let's continue. And uh, this paragraph, uh, Engels is l actually gives us the definition of authority that he wants to address. Um, and that is authority in the sense which the word is used here means the imposition of the will of another upon ours. On the other hand, authority presupposes subordination. So I'm going to read the rest of this paragraph, but I just want to say that that's kind of an important uh, statement by Engels. He's telling us what he means by authority and uh, what he supposes many people must mean by authority. Now, it must be said, I think that there's at least some value to what he's saying here insofar as that there are many people that use authority to mean imposition of will upon them, um, uh, the creation of subordinate relationships. 
And uh, I think there's some validity to that. Uh, authority has often been compared to the concept of domination in anarchist theory. However, I think what uh, anybody would find if they read much more deeply into anarchist thought and uh, probably more deeply uh, tried to understand the thought of anybody who was arguing with Engels is that this is um, not enough to just say anything is authoritarian, right? And uh, we're going to run into many of the problems of this conception that Engels holds and uh, his, his sort of narrow view or no, perhaps quite the opposite, his incredibly broad view of what authority means in the rest of this essay. <clears throat> so I'll continue. Now, since these words sound bad and the relationship which they represent is disagreeable to the subordinated party, the question is to ascertain whether there is any way of dispensing with it, whether, given the conditions of present day society, we could not create another social system in which this authority would be given no scope any longer and would consequently have to disappear. So uh, this paragraph and several to come, Engels is essentially laying out the sort of context of the fact that they're existing right around the time of the Industrial Revolution. Um, some of these paragraphs where he's giving these preface, I might kind of breeze through them because the points he's making kind of get made a few times. I think that's one of the shocking things about this essay is that it's so short, it says so little, yet he still manages to repeat himself. I think this is um, generally the example of somebody who actually doesn't have much to say on a subject. And uh, Engels, I think, is a, a, a candidate for that. But uh, he says, <clears throat> on examining the economic, industrial, and agricultural conditions which form the basis of present-day bourgeois society, we find that they tend more and more to replace isolated action by combined action of individuals. Modern industry, with its big factories and mills, where hundreds of workers supervise complicated machines driven by steam, has superseded the small workshops of the separate producers. The carriages and wagons of the highways have become substituted by railway trains, just as the small sh schooners and sailing feluccas have been by steamboats. Even agriculture falls increasingly under the dominion of the machine and of steam, which slowly but relentlessly put in the place of the small proprietors big capitalists, who, with the aid of hired workers, cultivate vast stretches of land. So I'll stop here just to say, this is, it might seem bizarre, but this is Engels setting up an argument that he intends to carry out through the rest of this essay that, um technology, technological development is authoritarian. Uh, I find it bizarre that he spends so much time in this essay on that argument, given that off the bat, anybody who talks about authority or authoritarianism is obviously talking about um, uh, acting agents, uh, people that carry out things and make decisions. It should be pretty obvious to anybody who is engaging in this conversation, who's thinking about this topic at all, that we're not talking about um, authority is not equal to necessity, right? Uh, the laws of physics are not the same as laws created by humans and, and, and uh, enforced by a threat of violence, for example. Um, we might talk about this in a little while because he kind of gets back to that. But believe it or not, this is he spends the majority of his paragraphs arguing a point very similar to this, that technology is authoritarian. Very bizarre. Um, I find it shocking that anybody found this con this uh, essay convincing. But let's continue. Everywhere, combined action, the complication of processes dependent upon each other, displaces independent action by individuals. But whoever mentions combined action speaks of organization. Now, is it possible to have organization without authority? Um, so, here he's setting us up for the next set of arguments. We'll say at least that um, his arguments about organization and authority don't have the flaw that he's talking about uh, inanimate objects having authority, which is uh, sort of patently absurd. At least when he's talking about organization, 
he's he's actually talking about conscious beings. I don't think that his his points really land because he doesn't understand what authority is and he has really no understanding of the analysis of authoritarianism. However, at least he now is talking about things that are relevant, which is to say how organizations are structured. However, we can see already the mistake he is going to go on to make. And that is that he thinks um, combined action and the complication of processes dependent upon each other displaces independent action by individuals. Um, th that is to say, he thinks that as soon as we all get together and we start, uh, you know, trying to do things together, he thinks that necessity is authority. And this is really one of the central flaws of his argument is that Engels is really all over the place in this essay. He broadens out the meaning of authority and authoritarianism to be utterly meaningless. And then um, he tries to claim that because his his definition, his understanding is uh, sort of, you know, meaningless and empty, that therefore the entire thought process, the entire political theoretic concept of authority or authoritarianism must also be sort of meaningless, or if not meaningless, all pervasive and therefore inescapable. And that really demonstrates his lack of understanding. Um, but we will continue here. Supposing a social revolution dethroned the capitalists who now exercise their authority over the production and circulation of wealth, supposing to adopt the entirety, uh, adopt entirely the point of view of the anti-authoritarians that the land and the instruments of labor had become the collective property of the workers who use them, will authority have disappeared or will it only have changed its form? Let us see. Um... Yeah, this one's really weird because it actually starts to expose that he understands that anti-authoritarians are, are requesting a, a transformation of society. But we already see that he seems to be thinking that anti-authoritarians also, therefore, must be anti-organization, that, that decision making, coming together and making decisions is authoritarianism. Um now, I feel like if I were writing this essay, I would have wrote this paragraph and I would have wrote some of the paragraphs we see here. And I, I just would have stopped and realized I was full of shit. Engels, on the other hand, continues. This is one of the longest paragraphs in the entire essay. Um, he basically goes on to give the example of a cotton spinning mill. Uh, I suppose maybe the reason this is the longest one in the essay is because Engels uh, was a factory owner. And as I understand it, that was a textiles factory. Uh, so I guess he has a lot of personal experience with uh, textiles. But uh, I will read this one in full just so we are just so we, uh, you know, complete the task. And that is, he says, let us take by way of example a cotton spinning mill. The cotton must pass through at least six successive operations before it is reduced to the state of thread, and these operations take place for the most part in different rooms. Furthermore, keeping the machines going requires an engineer to look after the steam engine, mechanics to make the current repairs, and many other laborers whose business it is to transfer the products from one room to, the another, to another, and so forth. All these workers, men, women, and children are obliged to begin and finish their work at the hours fixed by the authority of the steam, which cares nothing for individual autonomy. I'm going to stop here because I find this, this is one of the perfect examples of one of these statements where it's like astonishing that the man wrote this and said, you know... <laughs> I might not understand what the hell I'm talking about. Like he's literally arguing that steam is an authority. <laughs> like it's, this is absurd. Like, you know, he, he goes back and forth between at least kind of talking about political theory, which is to say things about organization and human decisions and uh, somehow thinking that therefore anti-authoritarians must be against the universe existing and, uh, you know, steam power driving things like he seems to think that if there is any necessity, that's authority. Authority equals necessity. Um, and in doing so, he tries to turn authority into this sort of all pervasive thing that is completely inescapable. And with that in mind, it's sort of weird that he is even talking about technology. 
Why is that relevant? You know, if you think that everything, every single kind of necessity is authority, why are you giving us all these modern examples? This has always been the case. You think that nature is authority. Um, and therefore, you know, when, uh, when, you know, people in ancient societies had to go hunting for, for food, you know, the stomach was imposing its authority upon them by making them hungry and, you know, it's silly. It's very silly. These arguments are extremely empty. Um, I feel as if anyone tried to make these arguments in the modern day, like face to face, we would laugh at them. Yet somehow this uh, essay by Engels has, has become uh, commonly passed around by authoritarians. Uh, I feel like they should be ashamed of it. Yet somehow they're not. Uh, let's see here. Let's find where we were. The workers must therefore first come to an understanding on the hours of work, and these, wor these hours, once they are fixed, must be observed by all, without any exception. Thereafter, particular questions arise in each room, and at, it, and at every moment concerning the mode of production, distribution of material, etc., which must be settled by decision of a delegate placed at the head of each branch of labor, or, if possible, by a majority vote. The will of the single individual will always have to subordinate itself, which means that questions are settled in an authoritarian way. Here, at least, once again, Engels is back to reality a little bit. He's at least back to talking about places where authority might actually exist, where we could discuss the existence of authority. That is to say, delegation of people to make decisions, administration, forms of organization. These are examples of things wherein you might be able to talk about whether authority does or does not exist. Now, it's funny because what we'll find is that he really didn't understand, I think, the difference between representation and delegation. And uh, it's funny because his famous line that is in this essay is him like uh, arrogantly <laughs> proclaiming victory because he doesn't understand the difference between delegation and representation. Uh, and that really shows because it also is the reason he doesn't understand the difference between authoritarianism and anti-authoritarianism. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll return to that as we go, but let's continue. Uh, let's see here. The, the automatic machinery of the big factory is much more despotic than the small capitalists who employ workers ever have been. Once again, somehow he thinks, he thinks machines are authority. Um, at least with regard to the hours of work, one may ride upon the portals of these factories. Uh, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's in uh, Latin, but las, las uh, Agni autonomia, va che entrate, which means leave ye that enter in all autonomy behind. Which, of course, he would think that, you know, he's a factory owner. He can't even conceive of the idea that there might be, you know, robust decision making processes, um, doesn't understand the difference between delegation and representation. So, of course, he's going to think this, you know, he, he does want a society where essentially there's just complete labor regimentation. I think he really exposes it in an essay like this, that Engels was not as much of a liberatory thinker as Marx was. So onwards, he says, if man, by dint of his knowledge and inventive genius, has subdued the forces of nature, the latter avenge themselves upon him by subjecting him, insofar as he employs them, to a veritable despotism independent of all social organization. Wanting to abolish authority in large-scale industry is tantamount to wanting to abolish industry itself, to destroy the power loom in order to return to the spinning wheel. Once again, this I just find this to be a really weird point, given that if he thinks that necessity equals authority, then the spinning wheel is just as much of an authority as the uh, as the power loom. There's there's really no difference. He thinks that any any necessity equals authority and the spinning wheel has its own set of necessities. There's really no difference except that you know, automated machinery, it, it, uh, he's correct to say, creates sort of rhythmic necessities. It creates these necessities that must be fulfilled in order for it to carry out its automated purpose. But to be fair, at the end of the day, so kind of as well does a spinning wheel. You know, the spinning wheel requires you to, um, you know, affix certain things to it at certain points, uh, to prepare the machinery in particular ways, to remove it when it has reached certain, uh, you know, junctures. And if you don't do it, things go slower. Same thing with automated machinery. The automated 
automated machinery will not continue forward until you do certain steps, you know, one, two, three, four. But the difference is, is yes, I will agree. The um, automated machinery, it, it, you know, it demands it in a much more robotic sort of way, whereas the spinning wheel, perhaps we might say that there is a little more of this hands on activity. However, this really has nothing to do with what anarchists are talking about or really any sort of uh, uh, anti-authoritarian is talking about when we're opposing authoritarianism. Once again, it's bizarre that this essay is so influential, yet he spends so much time talking about nonsensical things that have nothing to do with the topic. So he says, let us take another example, the railway. Here we are. He, he's, again, confusing things that exist and uh, natural laws and necessity as being authority. So the railroad, the railroad, oof, it's about to be real authoritarian because, well, turns out that anything and everything, when you have such a crappy definition, is authoritarian. Here, too, the cooperation of an infinite number of individuals is absolutely necessary. Then this cooperation must be practiced during precisely fixed hours so that no accidents may happen. Here, too, the first condi condition of the job is a dominant will that settles all subordinate questions, whether this will is represented by a single delegate or a committee charged with the execution of the resolutions of the majority of persona interested. In either case, there is a very pronounced authority. Moreover, what would happen to the first train dispatched if the authority of the railro railway employees over the uh, honorable passengers were abolished? Yeah, this is... I mean, I guess he's at least kind of back on topic a little bit. <laughs> he's back to kind of talking about relevant topics insofar as he's talking about, you know, delegates or committees charged with the execution of resolutions. But here he has actually like gotten uh, uh, close to understanding the point, but still does not understand the point. And that is that anti-authoritarians aren't against acting by necessity. They aren't against acting by the, the structures of, of processes that are taking place. They simply think that uh, all structures and all processes that are developed should be uh, laid out, uh, approved, and are able to be revoked by the people that are engaged in those processes. That's the essential component that, that the anti-authoritarians want. Uh, is that just, yes, there may be certain decisions that just have to be made in a certain way, but the people who are engaged in, the, in them should be the ones who get to make the decision about how everything is structured. Um, and if indeed there is, a, there is one particular way that everything works, then that will have to be the way that they pass the decisions. But then once again, we're just back to angles acting like necessity or the universe is authority. And so once again, his whole argument just boils down to this bizarre misunderstanding. But the necessity of authority and of imperious authority at that will nowhere be found more evident than on board a ship on the high seas. There, in time of danger, the lives of all depend on the instantaneous and absolute obedience of all to the will of one. I find this one funny because we actually have examples of... Um, you know, vessels that, that were that were sailed by crews of people who had, you know, a say in how things were carried out. And it's not to say they didn't then uh, delegate a captain, you know, given we have examples of, of pirates and the pirates uh, is sort of electing a captain and then being able to recall them at any point, um, that there being a constant consensus of the crew members being the basis by which any captain is decided. Uh, but, you know, that, of course, isn't going to come into Engels' assessment. Um, I doubt Engels knew anything about pirates, but it's also not entirely relevant. He's just carrying through his misunderstanding uh, all the way through to this topic. I, I, this is what I meant when I said we kind of had repetition in these paragraphs, right? He's just saying the same things in like five different ways, but he hasn't really made any new points in any of his contexts. It's the same point being made in all of them. And then he admits that he tried to make these arguments to the people involved, and uh, he basically tells us that they already gave him the response that debunks his entire argument, but, you know, he just doesn't understand the, the response, so he's just going to disregard it. This is It's funny because it, it produces this famous line where he's like, I'm ignorant and proud of it. <laughs> When I submitted arguments like these to the most rabid anti-authoritarians, the only answer they were able to give me was the following. 
Yes, that's true. But there is there it is not the case of authority, which we confer on our delegates, but of a commission entrusted. And basically, they're explaining the difference between representation and delegation. Representation is structured by um, a social structure that we cannot rescind. We cannot take back the social structure. The nature of authoritarianism is that the hierarchical structure is pre-baked into the social structure of the thing we're dealing with, and it can't be rescinded, and it cannot be reformed by the people involved. So that's literally what these people are, are saying to him. In fact, he's like recounting their arguments. He's just admitting he literally has no idea what they're trying to say to him. And I, once again, I guess this makes sense. He was a factory owner. He really has no idea. He has no imagination, probably. But here we've got his famous line, which uh, now contextualized with how bad this essay is, we can see is sort of hilarious, yet they love it. These gentlemen think that when they have changed the names of things, they've changed the things themselves. This is how these profound thinkers mock at the whole world. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a great line, you know, well written. It has a good punch to it. But I think it's really funny. The thing I've always pointed out about this line that I, I find so ironic is that Engels is the one who has redefined the word authority. He's the one who has made authority into this nebulous concept that is so broad that it became meaningless through his definition. And then now he's angry that because everybody else doesn't use his really crappy definition, that that means they're the ones redefining it. No, he just has no idea what he's talking about. I, I find this to be one of the most hilarious telling on yourself essays I've ever read in political theory. Um, legit, probably one of the um, worst essays I've ever read in political theory. But let's continue. We have thus seen that on the one hand, a certain authority, no matter how delegated, and on the other hand, a certain subordination, are things which independently of all social organization are imposed upon us together with the material conditions under which we produce and make products circulate. I mean, it's funny that he's saying this now. He already told us that he had brought these arguments to anti-authoritarians and they were like, yeah, I mean... That's true, but that's really not what we're talking about. And he's like, well, let me repeat. And it's like, <laughs> what an ignorant, arrogant asshole. Like this essay is one of the big reasons why I don't like Engels. I can't even imagine that he's this confident while being so wrong. It's just shocking. But um, yeah, yeah. I mean, just literally has no idea that the difference between a, an authoritarian structure and a non-authoritarian structure or a horizontal structure, no diff, no understanding of the difference between delegation and representation. Um, mind blowing that this man is looked to as uh, an important political theorist. We have seen besides that the material conditions of production and circulation inevitably develop with large scale industry and large scale agriculture and increasingly tend to enlarge the scope of this authority. Yeah, I mean, not in really a meaningful way. You know, the universe in your mind is the is the ultimate universal perfect authority and everything is subordinated to it. So, like, what's the difference? You know, uh, what what subordinates you doesn't really matter. Um, everything is authority. So there's no such thing as escaping it. And I don't know why you're emphasizing that there's some special kind of authority that takes place as we enter the industrial age. You know, it's just complete nonsense. You know, one of the things that I've always said is that if your word applies to everything, it becomes meaningless. So that is to say, you know, if uh, uh, the word is meant to be something specific, but there is no delineation, there are no things that are outside the category, then you've probably developed something that is useless as an analytical tool. And that's what Engels has done here. He's developed a meaning of the word authority that is effectively useless. And I have to believe that that was purposeful because I've read other of Engels' work and it at least was like, had some heft to what he was saying. Now, of course, he was just cribbing Marx at all points. So maybe the only value of what he was saying is just because he was stealing from Marx. But most of the time he has to, he has at least a little more self-awareness and, and puts a little more thought 
into what he's writing than this. I think for me, what's really happening here is Engels is just upset that people don't agree with um, his authoritarian ideology, uh, his desire for subordination of the workers. And instead of actually engaging with their arguments, he's just trying to make it impossible to have a discussion. He wants to make it so that nobody can discuss the topic. So, uh, the, the, and you'll find one of the most common ways that uh, that authoritarians do this is they broaden the meaning of a word out until it becomes meaningless, and they choose a word which was a threat to them somehow. Right? They choose a word which was a threat, and then they make the word meaningless so that we can't discuss it anymore. It's very Orwellian in the real sense of that word. Of that that word, you know, it's a it's a attempt to distort the meaning of a language such that there are no longer um, uh, usable tools for us to have discussions. So, let's continue here. Um, hence, it is absurd to speak of the principle of authority as being absolutely evil and of the principle of autonomy as being absolutely good. Authority and autonomy are relative things whose spheres vary with the various phases of the development of society. Uh, no, not by your understanding, Engels. Uh, they don't vary at all. In fact, there is no such thing as autonomy anywhere. Uh, everything is subsumed by complete authority in all aspects of life from the beginning of the universe to the end, because you think that necessity is authority. Therefore, everything is authority. And uh, that's why your arguments make no sense. That's why you're con contradicting yourself. So he says, if the autonomists confined themselves to saying that the social organization of the future would restrict, restrict authority solely to the limits within which the conditions of production render it inevitable, it sounds like they were angles like your last, like a paragraph ago, you, you literally just quoted them as basically saying that. Um, we could understand each other, but they're blind to all facts that make the thing necessary and they passionately fight the world. No, and... It's not the case. I think it's funny that he even gave us a, their small response and their small response already demonstrates that they've responded completely to his objection. Um, one cannot even imagine why he saw fit to write this essay. Why do the anti-authoritarians not confine themselves to crying out against political authority, the state? All socialists are agreed that the political state, and with its political authority, will disappear as a result of the coming social revolution. That is, that public functions will lose their political character and will be transformed into the simple administrative functions of watching over the true interests of society. But the anti-authoritarians demand that the political state be abolished at one stroke, even before the social conditions that gave birth to it have been destroyed. Okay, see here, now he's just like wandering off topic completely like this. Now, what is this has nothing to do with what is being discussed, uh, at least the, the this part, the demand that the state be abolished at one stroke, even before the social conditions that gave birth to it have been destroyed. That just has nothing to do with what we're talking about. They demand that the first act of the social revolution shall be the abolition of authority. Have these gentlemen ever seen a revolution? This one's also funny. It's a famous line, yet it's him being full of shit again. A revolution is certainly the most authoritarian thing there is. It is the act whereby one part of the population imposes its will upon the other part by means of rifles, bayonets, and cannon. Authoritarian means, if such there be at all. Once again, it's no more authoritarian than anything else. Uh, by your understanding angles, like you think everything is authority. So that's just the same as any other means. You know, if uh, if we had a mass convincing campaign where everybody was convinced they would be, you know, changing things by necessity of how their brains work and how they internalized the concept. And, and that would be the authority of their brain. And then, oh, oh, they, then they have to, to walk somewhere somewhere. Oh, well, they're only doing that by the authority of gravity and the authority of their muscles. You know, it's like, just, I don't even think he understands his argument. Like, it's not even coherent insofar as how he has formed it in the previous sentences. Um, it also is very clear he does not understand the difference between domination and self-defense, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, oh, what's the difference? You know, whether we're defending ourselves in an act of revolution or, you know, the policeman just beating us and imposing the will of capitalists. There's no difference. No difference. You know, um, uh, he just... It's like he literally just has no idea about how any of these political 
concepts work. Um, he's like, he's a, he's a Dunning Kruger poster child. Like he thinks that uh, his ignorance is as good as like actual political theoretic knowledge. It sounds like the people that he was angry at just knew more than him and had a better understanding of how power functions. And he's just a, a, you know, a petty bourgeois brained factory owner. And so he's just mind blown that anybody could conceive that the workers might actually have some control over how things are structured. No, can't conceive it. Like just tiny brain, tiny brain, smooth brain. Um, Let's see here. Oh, yeah. So he thinks that revolution is uh, is the is the same as, you know, everything else. uh, Authority. Uh, He can't conceive that it's an act of defense. One one might have to ask him, you know, and this is what I've actually brought to people before. Um, If a slave were to uh, want to escape the plantation and in order to do so, they had to strike down their master or strike down one of their their master servants. Would that be authoritarian? And I've had some sort of hilariously say, yes, that is authoritarian. But so then everything's authoritarian. We're back to the same nonsense concept again, right? Like you just want us to not be able to have a coherent discussion. Um, Let's see here. And if the victorious party does not want to have fought in vain, it must maintain this rule by means of the terror which its arms inspire in the reactionists. Once again, self-defense is now authority. Would the Paris Commune have lasted a single day if it had not made use of this authority of the armed people against the bourgeois? Should we not, on the contrary, reproach it for not having used it freely enough? I mean... I don't know. Is it, is it even really any different? I mean, just more authority. Everything's authority. It's authority all the way down. So like what they did was authoritarian and, uh, what they didn't do was authoritarian and just everything's authoritarian. So like, what are we even criticizing the Paris commune for here? I mean, uh, this is what happens when you have no understanding of how power works. Therefore, either one of two things. Oh, here we, we got another one of his famous lines and, and another sort of laughable point he's trying to make here. Either the anti-authoritarians don't know what they're talking about, in which case they are creating nothing, nothing but confusion. No, Angles, it's uh, you who don't know what you're talking about. That's why you're confused. Or they do know. And in that case, they are betraying the movement of the proletariat. In either case, they serve the reaction. Yeah, no, I mean, it's kind of funny. Like, did he think the anti-authoritarians in his time were like anti-revolutionary? Did he think that they didn't support the use of, of uh, even like violent revolutionary means? Because it just demonstrates that he literally had no idea what they were saying to him. But he was very confident to write one of the worst essays in, in, in uh, the, the history of political theory. So, yeah, uh, that's the entire essay, y'all. If you've never read it before, never, you know, like actually gone through because you thought to yourself, you know, if this is such an important piece to the authoritarians, this this work on authority, it must be like a whole book or something. Right. Or maybe a very long and involved essay. No, it's a very short essay that makes these sort of really shitty arguments. Um, The summary is that Engels has no understanding of how power functions. He can't discern different kinds of power. He can't discern the difference uh, between power to and power over. He can't discern the difference between domination and self-defense. He can't understand that, you know, things existing is not authority. He can't, he doesn't understand the difference between a delegate and a representative. Like, just literally the most empty arguments you'll ever read in a political essay. And therefore you can know one of two things. If somebody ever cites this to you, a, they haven't read it because if they did, they'd be ashamed to cite it to you or B they have read it and they have no understanding of how power functions. They're basically telling you that they like angles are completely clueless about how power in a general sense functions and the difference between domination and self-defense, the difference between, you know, delegation and representation. That's what any person who cites this at you is telling. So, yeah, 
that's the summary here. Um, I think uh, probably after hearing me say the essay, I think there are probably quite a few of you who've never read this essay that are shocked to find that that's how basic it was. <laughs> and uh, somehow have like three of these lines have become like famous lines. And, uh, you know, I'll at least give Engels credit that they were like, uh, the lines were quippy, right? Ooh, they sounded so clever. But that's probably because Engels was sitting around like malding about how he couldn't actually argue with these people with the anti authoritarians. Um, it makes sense. You know, he actually doesn't have a rebuttal. There isn't a rebuttal to the anti authoritarians. They are correct. They are the ones representing the revolutionary values of a socialist revolution. And he's the one representing sort of petite bourgeois values or to be fair, really just full on bourgeois values. You know, he as himself as a factory owner, you know, really embodies these bourgeois values. But even in his rhetoric, you know, he's trying to erase all of the distinctions. He's trying to to, uh, uh, make it to where we must always just subvert ourselves to authority because we can't discern the difference between different uh, pertinent concepts. And so he's really reinforcing uh, the ideology of rulers. This is the ideology of rulers, you know? It can't be otherwise, you silly peasants. Um, it has to be this way. I have to be here in the, in the, the top position, and, and it has to, you know, we, the, the king has to sit in the throne of the king, and the capitalist has to be in the throne of the capitalist. And, you know, this is essentially what Engels is, is doing arguments for. Engels is essentially arguing that all of these things absolutely have to be this way. And one must ask, if this is what you actually believe, how can you even be a revolutionary? You believe literally every single thing is authority. Every single thing is absolutely done by necessity. So there's no real room for change or transformation. And it's not shocking. I, I really have found that in a general sense, Engels, not a very profound thinker. Um, most of his, uh, most of his value and from what I can see is just that he regurgitated Marx and in regurgitating Marx, people began to think he was a profound thinker without Marx Engels would have wrote nothing of any value on authority is a great example of that. Uh, but that's about it. There's really not much to it. Uh, extremely empty, uh, very much lacking any sort of, uh, teeth. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, nobody should be afraid of reading this one. It's not persuasive. Uh, it, it, if anything, it almost is like an anarchist, uh, coming of age, you know, everybody reads on authority to laugh at it. And then you can see why we all just trade jokes about it afterwards, right? And making fun of on authority is a, is an old anarchist pastime at this point. So in any occasion, uh, that's it for the body of the video. Now I'm going to do my whole spiel and I'll start by saying, if you enjoy these videos, go become a patron at my Patreon, patreon.com slash anarch, A-N-A-R-K. If you're still here, if you're listening right now, click like, click subscribe, go comment down below. Tell me all your very interesting and intriguing thoughts. Uh, but that's about it. I appreciate you watching this long. You know, this is kind of a long time to get through the video. And uh, I had had a few people ask for this one, and I thought maybe I was going to do it at some point as well. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. That's about it for today. I'll see you next time.